And the Northern Ireland Secretary will meet representatives of all five major parties at Stormont this morning. Sinn Féin topped the poll in Thursday's election, but unionists are demanding changes to Brexit trading arrangements before they will nominate ministers to the power-sharing executive. Well, joining me now is Mick Filter, who's the editor of the web-based news site, which, of course, promotes dialogue in Northern Ireland called Slugger O'Till. Good morning to you. Grateful for your time on Sky News this morning. Now, the reality is that Sinn Féin's victory has thrown up more challenges than solutions. So what's likely to break this current impasse? Well, look, that's normal for uh, the last two Northern Irish um, elections. So we're used to having problems. We're also used to having solutions. Uh, and I think that's a difficulty. I, I, I guess the big question is, will Michelle O'Neill ever be First Minister? Well, she's got the mandate for it. She has the popular vote and she also has the uh, seats for it. So I do hope that we do get to that point. Um, the ceremony where they're supposed to choose first and deputy first minister is due in calendar date on Thursday. Um, but legislation means that they've got a further six months. They can't agree on Thursday a further six months. And I fully expect those six months to be taken up with negotiations with the British government, uh, with Boris Johnson's team um, to try and get some progress on those protocols. Yes, indeed. And talking about those protocols, 54 of the 90 Assembly members, that's the majority, are happy with the protocol. And so at what stage then would the DUP, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, just swallow that pill as difficult as it may be for him? Well, he won't swallow the pill. That's the, that's the truth. And, uh, and the reason he can't swallow that pill straight away is because the, the DUP's whole election campaign was around getting changes to the protocol so that there is no longer in any functional way a, a sea border in the Irish Sea. So um, it, it really is as simple as that. Um, there are proposals we understand that the British government have had from the European Union, but they seem to be stuck in number 10, much to the annoyance of the DUP because most of the uh, political embarrassment and difficulty they face is because the costs associated with that sea border, and, and let's get this clear, People very often think it's about the emotional breaking of the ties. It isn't just that. That's bearable if the economic promise of the uh, the protocol were to compensate for that. There are costs to that, and that's one of the reasons why the DUP is holding out. And, Mick, let's talk about the growth of the alliance. How should we understand that? Oh, I think it's absolutely in line with the changes uh, we're going to see in the census this year. Um, when I started Slugger O'Toole 20 years ago, it was in the year uh, the 2001 uh, census results were released. And back then, those people who said they were neither Catholic or Protestant were 14%. Then 10 years later, it was uh, 17%. And I fully expect to see at least 20% of the Northern Irish population saying they're neither one or the other. These are people who were born into one community or the other, now saying, uh, a plague on both your houses. And I think the rise in the Alliance Party I, I, I really does reflect that. So this is no trivial movement in uh, political for fortunes because one party's clever than another. I think it's absolutely in line with those changes and they're quite profound. Mick Filty, thanks for your time this morning.